Hi, welcome back to cyclingphysio.com. So in the other three videos we talked about why it's important to look at breathing and what are some of the negative things that can happen if we're not breathing properly. Now we're going to talk a little bit about how, how can we help, how can we change this, alright? And so the machine that we use is this little gizmo here and it's called a capnograph and it's not that particularly new as far as an invention goes. I mean, any time that they have someone in an ICU or an emergency room, they're operating on someone and they're doing artificial respiration for them, they have to monitor the carbon dioxide levels because if they go too high or too low, you know, you'll kill the person. So, you know, the science behind this is not new. What is new is looking at breathing in relatively healthy people and seeing how small uh, deviations outside of normal ranges contribute to pain and, and quality of life issues. And what's even newer, and I don't know of anybody who's really talking about it on this level, is using capnography to increase athletic performance because it is a very powerful tool for positive change, okay? Now, I want to I want to make something clear. You can't take a good breather who's doing everything perfectly and make them better. Like, you can make them marginally better, and maybe if you were a pro athlete and every other thing you did was perfect, and you made your breathing a little bit better, you would get a marginal gain. But I can tell you, if you're not breathing well, and there's millions of people in the world who don't breathe properly, if you're not breathing well, then you get a vast change in your athletic performance when you learn to breathe properly. Okay, so it doesn't help everybody, but the people that it helps, it helps dramatically. Now, this might be a good time to talk about, you know, how do I know if I'm an overbreather? How do I know I have these problems? Well, some of the most common signs and symptoms of mild overbreathing, and even mild overbreathing is a problem, is if you ever experience shortness of breath at rest, or that sensation that you can't get a full breath. Because remember we talked about the constriction of the smooth muscle? Well, there's also smooth muscle in the lungs. So it's it's ridiculous, but when you're over-breathing, your lungs constrict, and it, it makes it feel like you're short of breath, so you breathe harder, which is dumb, and that's how people wind up hyperventilating. Um, so, tightness in the chest, the feeling you can't get a complete breath, random tingling in your hands or your feet, now, I mean, everybody's, you know, you sit on your foot funny and falls asleep, that's not what I'm talking about, but tightness in the limbs or tightness in the hands and the feet, Okay, that can be a sign of overbreathing. If you're an anxious person and you get a lot of anxiety attacks or just generally anxious, if you're one of those people who's in the, the can for the hour before the race or you always find that in stressful situations you're, the first thing you gotta do is go to the bathroom, those are all signs that you are potentially an overbreather. Okay? So what we use is we use this machine and we hook it up to a, a nasal cannula. And now these cannulas normally are blowing oxygen up into your nose in the hospital. But we, we change the direction of the flow and this thing pulls the air out of your nose and it's sampling and analyzing the, the chemistry of the exhaled air. And it's looking at how much carbon dioxide is left. And then it does a little mathematical equation and up on the screen here, we get a graph. And we can tell how much carbon dioxide is in the exhaled air and there are very, very well established values for normal and what we want to see is, is is the person breathing at a normal level of carbon dioxide or have they blown off too much? Do they have too little carbon dioxide in the exhaled air? And if that is the case, then we know that they're a chronic overbreather. How do we fix it? You know, there's not one solution that works for everybody. It's very important that we don't get stuck into a this is the cue or this is the clue that works for everybody because it doesn't. What works for one person does not work for the next person. What's vital is that we analyze the air that's coming out and then we try different tricks, try this, try that, and then we look to see what works. And what works for people is what brings their carbon dioxide levels up into the ideal range. Okay. Now I can tell you generally breathing at rest should be quiet, it should be effortless, it doesn't need to be deep. So if at rest you're sitting there breathing and you can hear yourself breathing if you breathe through your nose, chances are you're breathing too hard, okay? But to really fine tune and get that into the ideal ranges, that really takes one-on-one -on -one work, okay? 
Now the other thing is, is when you're on the bike, we can have a look at this as well. And we can analyze what do you do during exertion and teach little tricks to get that carbon dioxide level right into the right zone. And you should be able to keep quite high levels of carbon dioxide right up until your lactic threshold. Okay? So if you think that you are an overbreather, you have some of the symptoms that we've talked about, don't hesitate and get down here and we'll have a look at it because I can guarantee you it has a dramatic effect on your training. Okay?